Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, simulate a simple inverting op amp on LT Spice for Mac. And uh, the reason I want to do this is because on Mac it's slightly different than it is on PC. Uh, you notice there's no uh, set of toolbars up here, so to access everything I would in Windows, for a toolbar, I'm going to right click. And so to find components, I go to Draft and then choose Component. All right. Uh, to do this, what I want to do is uh, go ahead and search for voltage. I want to start with voltage. Uh, I'm going to select it and I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to place it and then I can hit escape to end that. Now to give this voltage a value, I want to right click on where it says V. I'm going to set this to B10 at the moment. All right. And if I wanted to change the name, I could right click on V1 and have a similar issue. Next, I want to add some uh, resistors and I go back to component and I type in RES for resistor I grab my resistor and then I want to rotate it so I'll uh, hit command R and I need two resistors for the circuit that I'm going to draw and there they are alright uh, next I need to give these a value this first one I'm going to make 100k uh, so 100 kilo ohms, and the second one I'm going to make one mega ohm, which is abbreviated as MEG in LT Spice. Now, the circuit that I'm going to be drawing is an inverting op amp, which means that the output voltage is going to be 10 times the s size of the input voltage, although it's going to be negative. So uh, that is because I, the expression is uh, minus. R2 over R1 times the input voltage. Alright, so next component, uh, I will, I need an op amp, and it turns out that uh, it's in this uh, subfolder op amps, which has 395 entries, so I'm going to have to scroll down a little bit, uh, and then I'll miss it, and then what I want is an op amp that's ideal. Notice that it says that you must uh, include dot lib op amp dot sub. Uh, we're going to do that as soon as we place this block so that way we don't forget. Okay, so there's my block. I want to include that command. So I'm going to go to draft, choose spice directive, and then type dot lib op amp dot sub. What this does is it includes the op amp subroutine in my library. Okay. Uh, I'm missing two things here. I'm missing a ground and I'm missing wire. So let's go ahead and add the ground and do it for in two places here and hit escape when we're done. And then I next need to add the wires. I will do so by going to draft and choosing wires. And then I can connect uh, as you will see if you follow. Now you notice that I made a little mistake here. I have an extra wire I didn't really want. Um, I can fix that by going to edit and choosing delete and then cutting the thing that I didn't want. Hit escape, go back to draft, choose uh, wires again if your mouse uh, does what you want it to. Okay. So now I've got my circuit, and I want to simulate. And in Windows, if you click uh, the run command, uh, it will give me all the simulation options. Unfortunately, that is not the case here. Um, and if I look through here, uh, it's, a, it's fairly difficult to find what I might want. So uh, to do that, switch my view uh, to zoom to fit. If I want to do that, I need to actually include my um, command for simulation uh, as a directive. So I'm going to go ahead and click draft and choose dot op. And in this case what I want to do is a DC sweep. And the command for that is dot DC. And I'm going to sweep voltage V1. That's my only voltage source. Um, and I'm going to go from 0 to 0 0.1 or 100 millivolts. Uh, and I'm not going to set a step size, but if I wanted to, I could type it there. I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to place it somewhere on the circuit, and then I can click 
run. And what happens is that I get a figure that pops up, uh, which is a chart. And that chart, at the moment, uh, has nothing on it. Now, if I want to actually have something on it, and I want to uh, go ahead and uh, zoom a little differently if I can, uh, using my scroll wheel, uh, if I want something on it, I can use a probe, and you can see this. If I hover over a wire, I get a what's called a voltage probe. If I hover over some uh, component, I should get a current probe. So let's go ahead. I want to see the output voltage. I'm actually going to want to see both the input and the output, but let's start with the output. And you see that uh, when I select that, I get uh, the voltage of node 2. Well, the question is, what is node 2? I don't know. So why don't we give that a name? I can do so by right-clicking and selecting draft and then choosing net name. And I'm going to make it the out so I know what the output voltage is. And I can attach it to this wire. All right. Similarly, I want to mark what is the input, so net name. I'm going to call it VN. And I'm going to drop it on this wire above the voltage source. Now, if I click again, run, now nothing shows up. What I want to do is uh, select V in and then also select V out. Okay. Now, as I said at the outset, V out is going to be the negative of R2 over R1 times V in. So it does go negative, but what we don't see is that factor of 10 that I was talking about, at least not easily. So what I want to do is right click on V of V out and change it to negative via V out. And here I could also change the color if I wanted to. And what we will see when I do that is that I get negative V of V out and V in, which I can also change the color by right clicking and change it to magenta. And this is what we're looking to get. Uh, we can see that for a 0.1 volt input, uh, we get one volt output in magnitude. And that's all there is to this simulation.